Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're dealing with automation, a subject that can potentially be an absolute nightmare. I think it's implemented pretty poorly in Cubase, but if we navigate our way really carefully through the various options, you can actually make it work really quite smoothly. You just have to avoid uh, quite a few pitfalls, which hopefully I'm going to show you today. So first things first, I heartily recommend that you use Cubase automation, VST automation, rather than CC data. I'm going to show you both of those options. And I also recommend that you use the track quick controls. This is my preferred method of operation. So I'm going to show you that today and concentrate mostly on that. And then we'll have a look at a few of the alternatives a bit later. So here we have the, um, the quick controls window. And at the moment, we've got no controls assigned. I've selected this remove all quick control assignments to completely empty the box. And in Groove Agent itself, we've got no automation whatsoever. You can see what automation is assigned in Groove Agent with the options tab, click automation. And as we um, uh, create some automation during this video, you'll see stuff appear over here. Okay, so here's the challenge. We're going to automate this knob. A quantized knob of a random pad. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to assign new automation. As things stand, Groove Agent doesn't have any automation assigned to it. It has 512 empty slots. I'll show you them. We nip over very quickly to the quick controls, Groove Agent, Automation, there they all are. There's nothing in there. So we're going to create our first automation lane. And we just did. So now if I go back to the quick controls again and enter this menu, the first um, of the 512 slots is now full. And it says pattern pad 22 timing quantize amount. Now we want to assign that into the track control. That's nice and easy. Just select it. And there it is assigned to uh, track control one. So now if I move the uh, the number one slider on my keyboard, I've got I've got these mapped to my track quick controls. And there you see you see the knob moving, and you see my quick control amount changing as well. I'm going to throw all that away and I'm going to make it forget the automation. So we're back to square one again. Another alternative for you is for you to click the learn mode. And now if we right click assign to new automation, it's automatically going to write this automation into the currently selected track quick control slot. So that saves you a step. It saves you having to go into that automation menu and find it. If you put it in learn mode, it'll do that for you. Let's throw that away and make it forget. The third option, and frankly the easiest, and the one that I recommend, is that you put the quick control in learn mode. You engage write automation on the track itself and move the knob. And then it'll automatically get assigned to the track quick control. So that's the simplest and easiest way to do it. Write automation on the track, enable learn mode, and then if I select slot number two, this entire agent is in um, write mode. Anything that I move would just get assigned to that, trick, uh, that track quick control slot. Now it's not just knobs that can be automated. If I pick slot number three, and select my uh, crash options down here. If I choose a different crash option, it will get added in. And something like this, where you've got four options, that has to resolve down to a sliding scale. It does it pretty sensibly, frankly. So this is slider number three on my keyboard. Now I'll just take it out of learn mode so that we can have a moment to look at this um, automation down here. We've got four values. This is still a sliding scale. So we start off at all ways and I'm moving the slider up now and eventually, there we go, we flipped to ending. 
it's actually overwritten itself. That's pretty ugly, isn't it? There's main. And finally, up at the top, there's off. Uh, that's not the most elegant solution, is it? But it does work. So Cubase has figured out that each of those options occupies 25% of the range. And it basically does the most intelligent thing it can with, a, with turning a slider into a four-way switch. Let's hop over to the options window and see what we've got now. Those are the three values that we've assigned and you can see them in slots number one, one, two, and three. Now each automation slot can take any number of parameters. It's not a one-for-one -one relationship. And to show you how we can assign two different controls to the same slot, I'm going to right click on the bell option over here. And instead of assigning it to a new automation slot, which would put it in slot number four, I'm going to say add to automation. And this gives me the option to tie this control to one of the existing automation options. So if I add it to crash mode, now this third uh, automation option is going to perform two separate, completely distinct tasks. Now if I move my slider all the way down to the bottom, you watch these two controls. So we've got currently set to always bell. So now I'm fill ending. And there I switch to main and this the ride option switch to no bell. And then finally up at the top, crash is off and ride is no bell. So where we had four options, they cycled through progressively. But this is a 50-50 on or off kind of thing. And you can see it's actually tied those two controls together. And as I engage one, I'm flipping the other. You see I'm toggling between 100% and 0% on, uh, on the quick control which is resulting in crash being either always or off. If you want to tie all three of these together, you can. And now you've got one button click or one slider control, changing all three parameters simultaneously. Let's head back over to the options tab and see, see what that looks like. So here is slot number three, and now you can see the three different uh, controls being assigned to automation lane number three. Let's say we don't want the no bell. Click the little recycle button, and now we're just left with crash and hi-hat. Hi-hat is a three-state affair. Crash is a four-state affair, and it's just figuring all of that out numerically. It's just a linear slider. You can delete any individual lane, but at the top right hand corner, you've got delete all parameters. I'm going to click that. It comes up with the confirmation box. And now we've just thrown everything away. We've got no automation left. All of these default back to assign to new automation. And in our track quick control, we've defaulted to the three empty slot names. There's nothing in here. Obviously, my keyboard slider still works. I could still record this as automation data. It's just not doing anything. It's not mapped to anything. Quick note of warning about automation. If you're using keyboards to send MIDI controls in as track uh, controls like I have here, if I have right uh, automation enabled on the track and just get it going and move my uh, number one slider, what's going on there is that one of these lanes is CC41 which is what the keyboard's outputting. That's its default MIDI control output value. The other track is my Groove Agent Automation 1 slot. That's the only one I want. I don't want this generic CC41 instruction. It is possible to do that by ensuring that when right automation's on, it's only on for the quick control panel. And now when I move my slider, it only records the automation data. The track isn't receiving the CC41 messages from the keyboard. Not particularly elegant, you know, this isn't great. So this is the cleanest way I've been able to find to very quickly assign track quick controls to automation in Groove Agent, and then to have the extra power 
of being able to record this data as an automation lane in Cubase. I think automation data as a track in the main view is far superior to CC data. But as you can see, there are a few quirks and pitfalls about it. I'm going to throw all of that away and show you the other way to record automation data, which is to use control the change values themselves, CC data. So this is part of the MIDI protocol. This goes back, you know, 30, 40 years to, it's a baked in part of the MIDI protocol that there are 127 CC values. And you know, many of them are like CC1 is the modulation wheel, 64 is uh, sustain, the sustain pedal. Lots and lots of like default um, CC values, but there are also lots of empty slots there. So I use slots 41 to 48 on my keyboard to map to the uh, track quick controls. The way we use CC values, control change values in, in Groove Agent is to select Learn CC. And now the next MIDI control I move on my keyboard is going to get mapped to the quantized knob. So I'll move a, a rotary dial. There it is. So I just moved rotary dial number five on my keyboard. And that's now being mapped to the quantized value. If we right click, you can see there you are. CC value 25 is rotary dial number five on my keyboard. Now I've got Cubase configured to interpret all CC data as automation data. So if I now press play uh, on the song again, put it in right mode and move the knob. There you can see it recording automation data using CC values. And you can see MIDI channel CC25, but it's being converted into automation data inside uh, Cubase. If I didn't have this value set to automation and I had it set to MIDI part instead, it would record it as traditional old style CC data. And then you'd find it down here as an available option in your viewable CC controllers. I don't particularly want to go too deep down this rabbit hole because I don't use CC data in Cubase in this way. I think this is an artifact from a bygone day and I wish it would just go away. I understand the value of having something that's generic across the entire world. You know, as soon as you start using automation data, you're tying yourself to a particular protocol. I'm using the VST protocol here that was originally designed by Steinberg and has been picked up by other manufacturers, but it is a proprietary um, protocol as opposed to the MIDI standard, which is generic. I don't care. I'm using Cubase. I want to use all the powerful features of Cubase and automation, in my op opinion, is almost strictly superior to CC information. The one thing you do get with CC values is that you can set minimums and maximums. So this quantized knob here is currently set to 69. I'll set that as the minimum. I'll send it up to 100, set the maximum there. And now by doing it this way, by, control, by configuring this as um, CC data, then we've got, if I turn my rotary knob, it won't go past 69. I'm turning it like counterclockwise here as I'm talking to you it won't go past 69 turn it up it goes to 100 one of the reasons I hate CC implementation so much is that if we have a look at this knob it has now become automation data it's in our automation slot as pad 22 timing quantize amount in every conceivable way this is now automation it's, it, Groove Agent is saying, do you want me to forget the automation? Well, there shouldn't be automation. I told you that this is CC data. What's happened? It's just an absolute quagmire. I hate it. So if you never select these options down here and you accept the fact that this minimum and maximum stuff is like for, you know, if you're on stage and you don't want to accidentally go below 50%, I, I just don't care. I don't want to have to get into this situation where I tell it to forget the CC data and it has done, but 
it doesn't care because it's automation data as well. And then I have to also tell it to forget automation. So I would just never click that button. And I think your life will be richer and happier if, uh, if you've followed my advice. One option that I really like to use, this is probably my most common automated feature in Groove Agent 5. Pick your first slot, right click in the complexity box, pick your second slot, right click in your intensity slot. And now my two sliders are my performance. That's my XY pad. I don't have an XY pad on my keyboard, but I do have two sliders right next to each other. And I really enjoy just the, the dynamic flexibility of having this stuff mapped to sliders. And you saw how quick that was. That's how to make automation work in Groove Agent, in my opinion. Just don't get carried away. Keep it simple and you won't go far wrong. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please consider subscribing, hit notifications and you'll be sure not to miss the next episode. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.